Hello there, this is Dr. Saraswati from Avinash Lingam Institute for Home Science and Higher Education, Department of Resource Management. I am really happy to enlighten you on the today's topic which relates to human body in relation to the ergonomic study. If mechanics has been defined as a science dealing with force and motion, then body mechanics is of course a science dealing with body forces and motion. So the term body mechanics is itself a popularization of kinesiology, a scientific study of movement, body movements and uh, this has been stated by the person Duval. Now body mechanics is of interest because of a desire to keep the homemaker's cost of work at minimum. Now the physical cost of work can be too high in fatigue and even for a light work if the natural structure and the function of the body are disregarded during a work performance. Now and another tip factor here is an untrained worker often will work against your body rather than let her body do the work for her. The physical cost of work can be then out of proportion to the amount of work in technical sense of foot or pound or in energy expenditure or in discomfort that or the strain that the homemaker has felt. Yeah. Definition and basic me mechanics. In biomechanic analysis, the body segments are assumed to rigid links that rotate about joint center. Rigid body mechanics are based on Newton's law and deal with interrelationship among the forces acting upon the rigid bodies. Both static and dynamic analysis can be conducted using rigid body. Statics. Statics is actually the study of body at rest and static analysis involves the calculation of forces, moments and torques such, as, uh, such that the body remains in static equilibrium. Dynamic, it is a study of body and motion with upper and lower extremity movement as frequently analysis is very important. Kinematic, it is an area of mechanics which describe the motion of the body without considering the forces or carrying the motion. Kinematics variables include linear and angular displacement, velocity and acceleration. Velocity is a time rate change of displacement. Kinetics, it actually deals with forces change on the body. The term kinemit, uh, kinetics refers to forces that causes movement. There are forces which include both internal and external. In biomechanics, internal forces are the forces that is being generated by or acting on the muscles, ligaments and joints. External forces are the ones which comes from the ground which is called as a gravitational force and the other external sources could be an object lifted, a cord pushed until resistance. Mechanics of movement. The law of mechanics apply to the moving body and its segment just as they do to moving an intimate object. Knowledge of force of gravity on momentum and the leverage can contribute to the development of efficiency in body motions. Gravity. Gravity is a force which is constantly acting upon the human body and the one which the body is constantly combating except when in prone position. Eltzman says the only way to profit from gravity is to keep on going downhill. How to maintain the upright posture economically during standing, sitting, walking and running, climbing and lifting is the base technique to work improvement. The worker's own body is not only her most important piece of equipment but also the greatest weight she normally transports and manipulates. Walking, climbing stairs, lifting and the arms are all involved in the moving of the weight through the distance constituting work in technical sense. Posture. A well balanced and poised position facilitates a good sitting posture for work. Muscles and nerves are relieved of all strains as the weight is being carried by the bony support of the skeleton. The poise is such that the minimum of altering is required or needed for such action as the work may demand. Through the middle of the shoulders, hips and seat bones, the line of gravity falls. The body is straight from hips to neck and there is no flex or bend at the waistline. Permanent changes in the spine, in positions of the joint, ligaments and muscles and in the location of the body organs is due to poor standing and sitting postures. This can increase the fatigue cost of homemaking tasks and can produce strains and tension. Utilization of the most comfortable body position can ease the body and relieve it from being strained while working. Alternating standing and sitting is more soothing than either one sustained for a long period. Muscular effort, 
Physical work is carried out by one's muscle and therefore often called as muscular effort. There are actually two types of effort. One is static and the other one is dynamic. It is called a static or postural effort. The muscle stays contracted for a period of time and there is no movement as in holding a picture against a wall or carrying a bag of shopping. Holding a static or a fixed posture can be very strenuous as the muscles do not relax. Heavily contracted muscles squeeze against the blood vessels next to it and restrict their blood flow. This actually cut downs the supply of oxygen to the muscle and eliminates a, an elimination of waste product, lactic acid from the muscle leading to muscular aches or pain. These symptoms are noted in any fixed posture, for example, standing to attention or sitting upright. The next would be dynamic or rhythmic effort. Rhythmical contraction and relaxation of muscle resulting due to movement as in pulling, opening a drawer or walking upstairs. Dynamic work is less tiring and more efficient than static work. This is because of during dynamic work, a muscle contracts and relaxes rhythmically which makes it act like a pump for the flow of blood in the blood vessel, allowing the blood to supply more oxygen and take away more lactic acid than the during static work. What are the types of muscle that we have in our body? We actually have three types of muscle. The smooth muscle tissue which is actually seen within the walls of the organs. Now the second one would be the cardiac muscle. As the very name suggests it is the muscle of the heart. The third is the skeletal muscle tissue which constitute the muscle that make us move. The skeletal muscle is actually made up of bundles of muscle fiber that contract together in one direction. When a muscle actually contracts, during the movement, the fibers of the muscle reduces in length so that the amount of movement that the muscle produces actually depends on the original length of these fibers. Number of fibers that a muscle contains and the cross-sectional area of the muscle is actually the key factor on which the strength of the muscle depends. Muscle, muscular endurance. It is the capacity of the muscle or the muscular group to stay contracted over a period of time. Endurance can actually be static or dynamic. Static endurance can be resolved to by the length of time a limb can remain in a particular position. Whereas a dynamic one can be measured by the number of times a limb can perform a movement against a certain resistance. Next is muscular strength. It is the utmost amount of force that a muscle can put forth under maximum contraction. The amount of force that can be applied by the limbs depends on the body posture and the direction of force. Example for this would be exertion of more force is possible when standing and pulling backwards requires more force than when pushing forwards. There are a number of factors that manipulate our muscle strength and endurance. One would be age. The strength of a teen and early 20s is always seen at its maximum and it reaches its maximum by the middle of uh, middle to late 20s relics at this level for 5 to 10 years and subsequently begins to decrease steadily. The next would be this sex. Women are said to be about two thirds as strong as men. The reason could be that the men have greater muscle mass as percentage of body mass compared to the women. The third is body build. Normally the 95th percentile of person of a populace will be stronger than the 5th percentile person. The athletic or the muscular person will be liable to be stronger than the others. The differences are actually felt in the strength of the people of equal body size and this may be due to the amount of muscle tissue, body shape and the proportion. Fatigue. Lactic acid in the muscles gets built up due to static muscle work and this can cause a gradual dimmer in the muscle strength. Fatigue can be deferred by assuming comfortable working posture or changing the posture now and again. Decreasing the intensity or duration of the muscular effort, practicing exercises or having adequate rest periods can help in reducing the fatigue. Exercise, increased muscle strength and endurance can be possessed through the exercise up to the limits to offer maximum physical potential and this is mainly determined by the genes that we inherit from our parents. So when you have high humidity, it decreases the muscular performance and their endurance. Cold, cold does not affect the muscle strength at all if the user is going to use it ad with adequate protective clothing, but it can definitely affect their manual dexterity. Clothing and equipment, this again adds on to the overall weight and therefore requires extra muscular energy to move. Third, motivation and emotional state, fright, annoyance or enthusiasm can momentarily boost the muscular strength but the skill and accuracy may, may endure.
nature of a job manual workers are appreciably stronger than the other types of worker postural age backrest amplifies pushing strength by directing all the strength forwards footrest amplifies the pulling strength by letting the worker to brace her legs the amount of force that can be applied by the limbs depends on the body posture and the direction of force applied what could be the optimal need of muscle power avoid is to that is to avoid any kind of bend avoid keeping an arm out stress work sitting down as much as possible arm movement should be opposite and symmetrical working field should be at its best distance from the operator hand grip operating levers material should be arranged around the workplace and hand work can be raised above the forehand and elbow body mechanics although concerned chiefly with energy setting includes a feeling of comfort and discomfort associated with contracting muscles and skeleton among its major principles include keeping the body parts in alignment considering the center of gravity of both body and the article that is to be handled using the muscles effectively taking advantage of the momentum rhythm in the moment, movements other principles include remain close to the object use short lever arms for better control and efficiency with less strain maintain the center of gravity close to the object and widen the base of support and the position the feet according to the direction of the movement one will use to perform the activity use the largest and the strongest muscle of one's arms and legs and trunk avoid twisting the body when one lifts when possible push pull roll or slide an object rather than lifting it when any parts gets out of line the muscular effort is required to maintain the body balance in addition to whatever work the body is doing strains may also result when there is a problem of maintaining balance a border base of support is definitely necessary the feet may be wide apart or parallel with one in advance of the other energy cost of home making activity the performance of each home making task requires several types and combination of the effort for instance some mental effort is definitely necessary to direct the doing of any task even the routine ones such as dressing sweeping and dishwashing which are done almost automatically by most home makers tossel effort bending leaning rising turning stooping sitting and kneeling is necessary in doing some or more strenuous tasks such as those connected with the care of the house the garden and the uh, yard pedal effort walking moving and standing is essential part of making home making and recreational activity thus while various home making activities require different combination of effort most of the tasks require mental visual manual and tossel effort of some kind and a large number also require pedal effort the human energy required for the performance of any task is made up of several different parts a certain amount of energy is needed for the maintenance of muscular tension and for the natural body process such as respiration circulation secretion and excretion this is also known as resting metabolism in addition there is energy used in moving about and in actual doing of the task the table below presents the different types of effort used in home making activities the field of physical ergonomic can be summarized in the series of principle one the principle one would be working in neutral posture the first thing of this would be maintain the s curve of your spine posture provides an excellent initial point for evaluating the task that one does the best pose in which one can comfortably work is keeping the body in neutral maintenance of the natural s curve of the back is of vital importance whether sitting or standing the prime part of this s is situated in the lower back that means that it is good to keep the slight sway back when standing putting one uh, putting one foot up at the foot rest aids one to keep the spinal column in proper alignment good lumbar support often tends to maintain the proper curve in the small of the back the inverted v curve poses a greater strain on the back bending over creates a great deal of pressure on the spine even when the load is not been lifted use of a lifter or a tilter is always preferable neck alignment to be maintained spinal column consists of neck bones and thus it is more prone to the same request of maintaining the s curve neck being twisted for a prolonged period and bent posture can be stress as stressful as it is equivalent for the back adjusting the equipment is the best way to make changes such that the neck is always in its neutral posture 
Next would be keeping the elbows at sight. Now, the keeping the elbows at sight is a neutral posture for the arms at this point of at, and at this point the shoulders are relaxed. This is actually apparent once if one thinks about it, but normally we do not always do it. Keeping the wrist in neutral position. Wrist posture is never given a good thought. Keeping the hand in the same plane as the forearm would enable it to be in the neutral position. Principle 2. Excessive force reduction. Unwar unwarranted force on the one's joints can generate a potential for fatigue and injury. In practical terms, the action item is one for one to recognize precise instances of unnecessary force and think of the ways to, Im Im to improve it. For example, pulling a heavy load might produce undue force for one's back. To make it easier and comfortable, the wheels of a cart can be sufficiently large and that there are good grips on the cart or to use a power ticker which could make it easier. Having the hand hold lessens the exertion of one's hand that needs to be bear the same amount of weight. Principle 3. Keeping everything in easy reach. This principle is redundant with the posture in many instances but it facilitates to evaluate a task from this specific view. One concept involved in this is reach envelope, a semicircle that the arm construct as it reaches out. Frequently used things should be ideally be within the reach envelope of the full arm. Rearranging the work area and moving things closer to the worker solves many problems. Identifying the things that one reaches a lot for and change the location of the thing is as simple as mentioned if one works with the presence of mind. Of course, it is a matter of habit that the worker could be easily move closer to the things that he or she continually reaches for often. If in case the work surface is too big, leading the worker to reach across to get something, then favorable option is just to get a smaller surface. Principle 4. Proper work heights. Right working height can make things easier. Performing most work at the elbow height is advisable whether sitting or standing. What are the exceptions of this particular rule? Lower than the elbow height is actually suitable for heavier work. A height above the elbow is opted for precision work or visually intense work. Adjusting the height of the work table can be done by extending the leg or cutting them down. If that is not feasible, then one can either put a work platform on top of the table. This would actually raise the work up or, the slab or to stand on a platform. Principle 5. Excessive motion reduction. The number of movement one makes with fingers, wrist, arm or their back throughout a day. Use of power tools whenever likely is the simplest means to reduce manual repetitions. Changing the layout of the equipment to eliminate motion is also opted for. Uneven surface or lips in the way can be changed and thereby one can eliminate motions. Principle 6. Minimize the fatigue and static load. Static load is holding an object in the same position for a period of time. This is possible to create fatigue and discomfort that definitely can interfere with work. A good example would be writer's cramp. It is needless to hold on to a pencil very hard for a long period. The muscle exhausts after a time and start to hurt. This act can be eliminated if the worker prefer to use a fixture. Principle 7. Minimize the pressure point. Contact stress is commonly used term for pressure point. Squeezing hard is the best example to be cited for. On a, onto a tool like a pair of pliers, having a cushion grip or contouring handle to soothe the hand could solve this problem. Inclining or pressing one's forearm against the hard edge of a furniture definitely can create a pressure point. Now, uh, padding the edge of the furniture solves this problem. Similarly, when standing on a hard surface, the same points can be felt. That heels and feet can begin to hurt and the entire legs begin to tire. The best solution for this would be is to use of anti fatigue matting or a special insoles for their shoes. Principle 8 is providing clearance. Essential work areas need to be set up such that one has enough room for their head, their knees and feet. This is the concept that relates to providing clearance. In order to prevent the worker from having to work in contorted posture or reach work area must have sufficient space. This enables a worker from having to bump into things all the time. Another perspective to this principle would be that equipment built and the task set up are in such a way that nothing blocks their view. Principle 9. Move, exercise and stretch. 
Healthy body requirements are exercise and stretching which means that muscle needs to be loaded such that their heart rate needs periodic elevation. Based on the type of work one does, different exercises on the job can be useful. Like stretch and warm up before any strenuous activity is useful for physically demanding work, taking a quick energy break every now and then and to do few stretches is sufficient for a sedentary worker. Shifting of posture is ideal for one who sits for a long period. Adjusting the seat up and down throughout the day can also be of additional help. Most stretch and change position often reduce fatigue. Principle 10. Maintaining a comfortable environment. This principle involves working in suitable environment and it should be a worker friendly environment. Lighting would be the most commonly faced issue. Highly polished computer scene. Uh, screen reflects every stray bit of light around always and it always poses a problem in a computerized office. Similarly, insufficient lighting can also affect the worker very badly. Glare, shadow and just insufficient light can produce a lot of issue on the worker. It drastically affects the performance of the worker. Task lighting can be an advantage to such problems in many instances. Vibration. Vibration is an additional and frequent problem. As an example, vibrating tool can be dampened to reduce its effect. Making displays and controls explicable. Advancement of work organization are the principles which is to be followed in the physical ergonomics. Now I would like to conclude to say that it is far easier to prevent injury than it is to fix them after they occur. So it is a responsibility of the employer to provide a safe work friendly environment and it is a responsibility of the employees too to use the good body mechanics and maintain health, lifestyle, healthy lifestyle habits to prevent injury. Thank you.